Hi everybody, welcome back to Cooking Hour. Um, if you haven't joined us before, my name is Allie and I'm an educator at the Boys and Girls Club of Fitchburg and Lemonster. And today for Cooking Hour, we're actually going to be baking. We are going to be baking uh, peanut butter cookies today. So these cookies have the little chocolate kisses in the middle and they're really, really delicious. So this is a great activity to do with your family or uh, this is a really super easy activity. So if you're doing it by yourself, as long as you have a parent or guardian help you put them in the oven, you can do this recipe all by yourself. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the ingredients. We are going to have to chill the dough. So it's gonna have to be in the refrigerator for about an hour. Then we're gonna take the dough out of the refrigerator and form the cookies and put them in the oven. So that's our uh, agenda for today. And what we're gonna be doing first is we're going to be washing our hands and washing the workspace. So just like for every cooking video, I'm gonna wash our hands and we're also going to clean off our workspace. And in my case, I'm cleaning off the table so that we can show you the ingredients and get started. So we're gonna head over to the sink and wash our hands first. So if you've watched the cooking videos before, you know the drill, we have to wash our hands before we get started. So I'm gonna take some soap and a little bit of water and rub my hands together. So I am making sure the soap gets everywhere in between our fingers, in between our thumbs, the backs of our hands, the backs of your fingers, making sure we get the palms of our hands, and also your wrist area as well. So making sure we get the soap everywhere. And then what we're gonna do is turn the faucet on. You want warm water to wash your hands. And I am just rinsing the soap off at this point. You wanna keep your hands in the water for at least 20 seconds. And you wanna do the exact same thing you were doing with the soap. So you're gonna to wanna to try and get the soap off. So in between your fingers, in between your thumbs, backs of your hands and fingers. You wanna get your wrist on both sides, the palms of your hands. Making sure you really get in between your fingers. If you can get your fingertips and your fingernails, that's a bonus. And to keep yourself busy, you could go through your ABCs, sing a little song, whatever allows you to keep your hands in the water for at least 20 seconds. So now what we can do is turn the faucet off and grab a towel or a paper towel to dry our hands. You can also air dry your hands. Just be really careful that you don't splash anybody. All right, so now we can start baking. Now that we've washed our hands, we need to clean off our workspace before we get any of the ingredients out. So I am just going to run this wet paper towel over the table, making sure that I get the table nice and clean just in, and just in case we drop a piece of chocolate or if we have some ingredients that land on the table, we want to make sure the table is clean. So just making sure you're going over it, you can use soap or a sponge, whatever you have on hand, just make sure you are washing your workspace, be it the counter or the table, whatever you're using. All right. So I am going to throw this away and grab our ingredients. All right, so now that our hands are clean and our table is clean, we can go through the ingredients. So some of the ingredients are still in the refrigerator, but I'll make sure I grab them before we make the dough. But let's go over what we have on the table and I'll tell you what you're gonna need from your fridge. So the first ingredient, like usual when we're baking, you need all purpose flour. You're going to need one and a fourth cups of flour. You're also going to need a teaspoon of baking soda. You're going to need a half a teaspoon of salt. You're going to need half a cup or one stick of unsalted butter, which we're gonna grab from the fridge. You're also going to need a cup of peanut butter. So if you're using regular Jif peanut butter and not the natural peanut butter, you can probably omit the salt because this peanut butter has a lot of salt in it already. But if you're using all salt, unsalted natural peanut butter, then you can use the salt. But because I have this peanut butter right here, 
Um, I'm going to omit the salt in my recipe because this peanut butter is very salty already. Um, you also need a half a cup of granulated sugar and you need half a cup of light brown sugar. So you need two types of sugar for this recipe, light brown sugar and granulated sugar. You need half a cup of each, which will make a whole cup in the dough. And then you also are going to need some granulated sugar saved for later. Um, you can just pour it out on a plate, but we're going to be rolling the cookies in granulated sugar as well. So you can save a little bit of sugar for the end. You're also going to need half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and one egg. So that's the other thing we're going to have to grab from the refrigerator. So from the refrigerator, you're going to need a stick of butter, so half a cup, and you're also going to need an egg. So those are the two things I'm going to grab, but you're also going to need your mixing bowl, whatever mixing bowl you have, and a spatula. Plus, you're going to need plastic wrap to wrap the dough. You can keep the dough in the bowl, but it's just easier to roll it into a ball and plastic wrap. But if you want, you can just keep it in the bowl and stick it in the refrigerator. It's not going to make much of a difference. It might dry out a little bit, uh, but if you don't have plastic wrap, it's not a big deal. You could also stick it in a container if you have a reusable container. That works too. So I'm going to grab the two ingredients from the refrigerator, a stick of butter and an egg. Um, and I'm also going to grab my plastic wrap. So we will start mixing in just a minute. Okay, so I grabbed my spatula, I grabbed an extra bowl because you are going to need a second mixing bowl just to separate some of the ingredients, and I grabbed my plastic wrap so I can wrap it up afterwards. So, what you're going to want to start with is your dry ingredients. So we're going to start with flour, that's the first ingredient, and you're going to want to put this mixture in your smaller bowl because we're going to be adding everything into the larger bowl. So what I'm going to do is open up my flour here, and I need one and one fourth cup. So it's a brand new bag of flour, so I have to open it up, and then we can measure out our flour. Best tip if you're opening a new bag of flour and you're worried about some of the flour getting everywhere, is you can open it up either over a bowl or over the sink. Especially some bags of flour, I know the flour gets stuck in between when you're opening it, so it can go everywhere. So if you open it up over the sink, you don't have the mess. So I'm going to grab my cup and a fourth of a cup, and I am going to measure this out, making sure it's flat on the top. So there's one and a fourth. So one cup and fourth of a cup in my bowl. If you want to get really fancy, you can always grab a knife and make it super even on the top. But I just like to use the side of the bag and it makes it fairly even on the top. Then you have to dirty another utensil. You never want to do more dishes than you have to. And then you're going to have one teaspoon of baking soda. So I'm using my teaspoon here, leveling it off, adding that to my flour. So I've added my baking soda, so I'm going to put that up here. I always like to put the ingredients I've already added up towards the front, so I know that I've added them in. And at this point, if you are using natural peanut butter without any salt in it, then you can throw in your um, half teaspoon of salt. But because I'm using a processed peanut butter, I am going to omit the salt just because there's a ton of salt in this peanut butter already. So I don't think our recipe really needs any more added salt. And then what you're going to do is you're going to stick this aside and we are going to work on our, what they call wet ingredients. So dry ingredients and then wet ingredients in your larger mixing bowl. Now here's where if you have a uh, hand mixer or a stand mixer, you could always use that. I'm gonna show you how to do it without one of those tools. So what you're gonna do 
is you're going to grab your peanut butter and I'm going to use this spatula here. Actually, I'm going to go and grab a spoon. So I'm going to grab a spoon, but while you're up, you can take your stick of butter with you. If you haven't uh, set it out to soften to room temperature, I always forget, so it's not a big deal. You can take your butter and place it in a microwave safe bowl and put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, just until it's softened, it's melted a little bit, and then you can bring it back to your workspace. So I'm going to grab a spoon and I'm also going to melt the butter while I'm at it. So I'm going to get up, grab those two things, and we'll get started mixing everything together. All right, so over at the microwave, I've grabbed a microwave safe bowl. I'm going to stick my butter in the microwave and start with 30 seconds. All right, so I grabbed my spoon and I melted my butter in my microwave. Again, if you'd like to uh, just soften it, you can leave it out um, on the counter and let it soften. But what I'm doing now is I'm grabbing a cup of peanut butter. If you want to precisely measure it out, that's fine. Um, I find that it, most of it just gets stuck in the measuring cup, so I just eyeball it. Um, usually two big scoops is about a cup. If you want to add in a little bit more if you love peanut butter like I do, that's okay too. Don't add in too much though because you'll find that uh, the peanut butter can be really strong sometimes and having that peanut butter flavor in there is great, but a little too much peanut butter can make your cookies really kind of dry and chewy, which never is a good combination. So now we're going to do is we add in our cup of peanut butter and we're going to add in our stick of butter, which is half a cup in here. So one way that you can substitute some things when you're thinking about uh, people that have dietary restrictions, um, I'm using a plant-based butter. So you can always do that if you have somebody that is a vegan or just is really sensitive to dairy products. Um, they have a lot of plant-based stuff in the grocery store now. Uh, so now what I'm doing is mixing those two things together. It's called creaming them. So we're basically just mixing them. And this is a great step if you have a hand mixer or a stand mixer. You can always use one of the two to help you cream them together. But back to dietary restrictions. This uh, recipe also calls for one egg. Um, you can always substitute eggs with applesauce. Um, if you have a uh, vegan or uh, a lot of people are very sensitive to eggs. So um, that's another way you can substitute them in the recipe. If you look it up online too, there's a ton of different substitutes for eggs, depending on what they're being used for in your recipe. So here you could use, I believe it's a fourth a cup of applesauce for every egg. You just gotta be careful with some recipes, especially if there's a lot of eggs involved. You wanna make sure that you're looking at the conversion and trying out recipes, knowing that sometimes they don't work if you are substituting things. Sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error with things. All right, so I've mixed my peanut butter and my butter together. And now what I need to do is add in the egg. So I'm gonna take my egg here, crack it in, and then I have to go wash my hands. Remember, here, when you're cracking an egg, adding an egg to a recipe, you have to go and wash your hands afterwards. You don't wanna uh, have germs all over the place and uncooked eggs are a big factor in that. If you're touching things and other people are touching things and putting it in their mouth, you want to be really, really careful. So I'm going to go wash my hands, hand washing break, and then I'll come back. Now that I've washed my hands, I can mix in my egg. So your batter at this point is looking very runny, but that's okay because we're going to add in the flour mixture and we're also going to be adding in the two types of sugar. So once you get your egg mixed in, you can start to add in your sugar. So this recipe calls for a half a cup of granulated sugar. 
and a half a cup of brown sugar. So we're gonna grab our half cup here and make sure we're level, adding that in. You can give it a little stir if you'd like to try and incorporate it before you add in the next set of sugar. So half a cup of granulated sugar and you can leave the granulated sugar out for afterwards because we are going to need it. And then we're going to need half a cup of brown sugar. You want to make sure that you pack it into your cup. So just make sure that you push it in so that you are making sure you get that full half a cup. So packing it in, we got our half a cup of light brown sugar. And you can always tell that you've packed it in pretty well if it comes out exactly like the mold. So if it comes out looking like your measuring cup. All right. So we're mixing all these things together. I love the smell of brown sugar. It's great. And then what we're going to do is make sure that we add in our vanilla extract. I think that's the one thing that sometimes people forget to add because it's usually at the end of the recipe. It's a kind of small box so you can forget about it on your table. But you're going to need half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So we're going to add that in now. And with vanilla extract, again, this one smells really good too, but make sure you're not smelling it from the container. You should be able to smell it from your dough. And if you go over on your vanilla extract, it's really okay. Vanilla extract is just adding in that extra flavor. So if you add in a little too much, it's really fine. That's one of those things that as long as you don't add too much, you should be fine if you go a little bit over. Sometimes I add in just a little extra because I love the smell. All right, so everything has been creamed together. You can see everything has been incorporated. Now what we need to do is add in our dry ingredients. So you're just going to slowly add this in. So you're going to add in about a third. All right, practice our fractions. About a third of the mixture, mix it in. And this is when you're going to see the dough form. So it's going to go from looking like really kind of gloppy peanut butter to actual dough. All right, I'm going to add in another third, mix that in. With baking, especially if you don't have a stand mixer or a hand mixer, you're going to gain some upper arm strength because we've got a lot of stirring and mixing to do. All right. And then we're going to add in the last third, which will give us all of our mixture. And we're going to mix that in. So this recipe again is, is fairly easy. It's a good one to practice baking. All right, cookies are usually fairly easy. So they're great practice for first time bakers. And you can make the dough all by yourself. You just need a parent or guardian to help you put them in the oven. So this is a great recipe for starter bakers. <laughs> All right, so just making sure basically the flour mixture disappears. You don't see any more white in your mixture. So mixing it all together. And then what you're going to do is grab your plastic wrap and you are going to place your dough in the plastic wrap. And you can probably tell that from your dough, it's still a little bit sticky. 
but by chilling it in the refrigerator, it's gonna lose some of that stickiness. It's gonna be a lot easier to work with. I know sometimes it's hard to wait, but chilling the dough in the refrigerator is definitely an important step to make sure that you get great cookies in the end. All right, so I'm gonna grab my plastic wrap here. I'm going to give myself some room, lay my plastic wrap out. Plastic wrap is one of those things that sometimes is difficult to work with, but you just got to be patient. And that's why we clean off our workspace beforehand so nothing gets stuck to the plastic wrap. Just the dough. All right, so we are now going to take our dough and try and dump it as nice as possible onto our plastic wrap. Make sure you scrape down the sides to get all the dough out. And we are all set. So I'm just gonna grab this little bit that's on the spoon, the spatula and we are all set. So try and form it into, show you guys, form it into a little ball here and wrap it up. And this is going to go in the refrigerator for an hour. Um, if you don't have time to make it that day, you can always leave it in the refrigerator overnight and make the cookies tomorrow. So this is a great uh, make bef uh, beforehand recipe uh, so that you can just stick it in the refrigerator and do it the next day. Um, so this is a great one. If you don't have a lot of time, you can always do the dough one day and then uh, bake the cookies the next. So I'm going to stick these in the refrigerator and we'll be back in an hour. I'm about to pull the dough out of the refrigerator. So what you wanna do is you wanna preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're gonna let that heat up. I'm gonna grab the dough from the refrigerator and we're gonna get started rolling them out. So I took the dough out of the refrigerator. I like to leave it on the plastic wrap, but if you'd like to put it in a bowl, you can do that. I like to do as few dishes as possible, so I like to leave it on the plastic wrap. And then I also have a, a cookie scoop. If you don't have one of these, you can just pinch pieces of the dough off um, at a time and just roll it in your hand. And then I also have a bowl of sugar here, just the granulated sugar. Um, this is about, I'd say probably a fourth of a cup. So I like to add in just a little bit at a time so that I don't waste the sugar because once you pour the sugar in the bowl and put dough in it, um, then you can't pour it back into your uh, granulated sugar bag. So I like to pour in just a little bit at a time so I, I don't end up wasting a ton of sugar. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my cookie scoop or you can just pinch pieces off of your uh, dough ball here and then you're going to dump them in the sugar, roll them around, and put them on the cookie sheet. So I have my cookie sheet over here with my silicone mat on it, or you can put down aluminum foil or parchment paper, whatever you'd like. So we're gonna get started. So I used my cookie scoop and I just made a little uh, ball of dough here, and I'm gonna dump it in my sugar and roll it around. So you're coating it in your granulated sugar. And then I am going to shake off any extra and it goes right over on the tray. You wanna make sure that you press it just a little bit and that'll keep it from rolling around on the tray. So I'm gonna continue to fill up my tray here. The recipe says that this makes about 36 cookies. I find that recipes sometimes lie about that number. Um, so you might get 36 cookies depending on how big you make them, but it says one and a half inch dough balls. So depending on kind of your, your eye on the measurement there, you may make a little bit less or you might make a little bit more. So I'm going to continue to roll these out and then we will stick them in the oven. 
the tray is now full, you want to make sure that you leave quite a bit of space in between these cookies because they do tend to spread out sometimes. And the best thing about leaving it in the plastic wrap is you can wrap it back up and stick it back in the fridge until you're ready to use it for the next tray. So for these cookies, while our oven is preheating, we're almost there. Um, for these cookies, sometimes it can be a little iffy, so you want to make sure that you're checking on them. I'm going to start them at 10 minutes, and then I'm going to check on them. And as long as the bottom has browned a little bit, then you can take them out. But cookies usually don't need a ton of time in the oven. We're going to start them off with 10 minutes. Keep checking on them. The recipe says 18 minutes, but again, sometimes you want to set it a little far back, depending on how you like your cookies. If you like your cookies really crunchy, then you can leave them in the whole time. But if you like kind of gooey soft cookies, then you're going to want to decrease the time. So we're almost at our temperature here. So I'm going to put the dough back in the fridge and then we will stick these in the oven. Our oven is up to temperature. Cookies are on the tray, dusted in uh, granulated sugar. So this is the part where you need an adult because you have to put them in the oven. So the cookies are going to go in the oven. I'm going to set a timer for starting at 10 minutes, but we may have to put them in a little bit longer. Okay, so the cookies came out of the oven. I put them in for about 12-13 minutes. And as you can see, there's a little bit of brown on the outside of the cookie. So that's exactly the, the type of cookie that I like is the soft gooey cookie. So if you want to put them in a little bit longer for a more crunchy chewy cookie, you can do that. But I think mine are pretty much done. So the last step, I'm going to take a spoon and you want to gently press in the middle. And here's where you can have fun. You can either put a Hershey Kiss in the middle, a Reese cup in the middle, or I like to just use mini chocolate chips. It's your choice. You could use whatever you'd like. But then you just put the little chocolate chips in the middle, add a few in there, and you can do this to all of your cookies. Spread them out a little bit and they're going to melt a little bit while the cookie is still warm and you can enjoy. So I would wait a couple minutes, just let them cool off a little bit. So I'm going to set a timer for like 10 minutes and then you can enjoy your cookie. You can either add chocolate chips, you can add a peanut butter cup, or you can add a Hershey Kiss. So your choice, you can add any of those three in the middle or if you like a different type of chocolate, these cookies are very versatile, so you can add pretty much anything in the middle. You can chop up Snickers bars. You can pretty much put any type of candy in the middle. So there's your cookie. So again, set a timer, and you can put them on a uh, another piece of parchment paper off of the cookie sheet so you can bake the rest of them. But again, you're going to get quite a few cookies, maybe not exactly 36, depending on how big your cookies are. But I think these are pretty much the perfect size to enjoy. So thank you for joining me for cooking hour. Technically we we're baking today, but thank you for joining me. Uh, down below, please comment uh, with ideas for the next cooking hour. What recipes would you like to see? Also uh, comment below with a picture of your finished cookie. I'd love to see all the different things that you put in the middle of them. And then uh, also down below, tell me what is your favorite type of cookie. Do you like peanut butter cookies, sugar cookies, chocolate chip cookies, crinkle cookies? What's your favorite? So please comment below with all of those different ideas and pictures. And I hope to see you next time on Cooking Hour. Bye, everybody.